there are methods that reduces parasitic loss of a supercharger when it is not on full load. Pressure buildup by a supercharger has direct implications to load. The more pressure built between the engine volumetric intake and supercharger will result in more load to spin the supercharger than add volume to this equation to get positive displacement. The energy that is responsible for this load is taken off the engine but the energy is returned for the engine to produce more power. Its mechanism is to be more efficient as an air pump than the engine. A basic supercharger is subjected to positive or negative pressure relative to engine being on throttle or off it. Compression or tension is going to have implications on parasitic loss to the engine because it is tantamount to load. When added volume is not needed or added power, one would argue that for the given power per litre, a supercharger can be more efficient because it can be subjected to engine downsizing compared to a naturally aspirated engine. Minimizing parasitic losses here would simply make an engine even more efficient in the context of downsizing. The thing is that because it relies to be mechanical, there is always room for further progress in efficiency within the realm of a supercharged engine in its design. There are superchargers that are geared to two speeds. There are also those with a clutch mechanism to turn a supercharger on or off when additional volume does not come wanting and this will result in taking engine volume downsizing even further. Pretty sure many have had their own ideas of how to make a supercharger work more efficiently, especially with turbo supercharging, but I'm not going to get into the latter in this piece. Then of course, there is the electric supercharger, which is superior in every way regarding the lack of parasitic losses. There are also those who coin it the electric turbocharger. An idea I once played around with was to circulate and recycle the positive pressure energy into the negative pressure area which is the supercharger's intake. The idea was to find equilibrium in positive and negative pressures so this will in turn neutralize load while the supercharger is still spinning. The challenge was to go around having not to rely on dramatic mechanicals such as a clutch or any direct mechanical engagement to reduce parasitic losses. What would remain is mechanical friction load, especially with the addition of tension belt drive and aerodynamic drag. I later found out that this concept was not new and had been around for a while in modern supercharging. The usual arrangement is that a throttle is mounted on the intake, typical of a supercharger, and from this design a passage reroutes the outlet back to the supercharger intake just behind the throttle. This arrangement isolates the supercharger and allows the passage to circulate any unused additional positive pressure back to the negative pressure intake area and equalize any additional load developed by the added negative and positive pressure. This means that the load on the supercharger is specific to the boost requirement of the engine during a non-maximum throttle application. Other than the aforementioned friction and drag, parasitic losses will only be around how much load necessary for a given boost required. A supercharger can simply do away with the system and rely on the throttle to reduce parasitic losses, but then the negative pressure developed behind the throttle is still tantamount to load, hence why bone the bypass passage. Here we can see as Audi illustrates the V60 FSI twin screw supercharged engine, how heat is minimized that relates to how load is also minimized during low load operation where there is minimal boost. Reduced negative pressure behind the throttle and reduced positive pressure after the supercharger. At this state, parasitic loss is at a bare minimal. The throttle opens up to full position and now the supercharger can charge some air into the engine as the passage diameter is smaller than the inlet and outlet of the supercharger. Once the passage is closed, boost builds up 
so does heat and load as the route to cycle pressure is turned off. Parasitic losses increases to full load. 